Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So, I've um, been playing with the Tello for a couple of days and I thought I'd come out and do a quick flight demo with it. Walk you through some of the features, some of the things I found out about it. Um, and give you some more information about what you can expect from it. So, um, first off, before I get into flight, there were some things that I found about the Tello that I would say are kind of like bugs right now. Um, and there are also something that may be updated in a firmware, uh, maybe, maybe fix a firmware update. Um, <clears throat> there are a bunch of warning messages that pop up, if you can see here on my screen. A bunch of warning messages pop up, and that usually happens when you're pivoting and pitching the Tello in your hand. It's warning messages about not being level, warning messages, some of them are useful, some of them I think are kind of uh, redundant. Like, I don't need a lot of warning messages telling me that I'm pitching this around in my hand, but there are some that'll tell you that it's like too windy. And when I got the one that said it was like too windy or, or the obstacle avoidance, uh, not obstacle avoidance, or the... Um, the positioning uh, sensors weren't working because it was a little bit too dark. Um, it, it, it popped up in Chinese, and, and I don't know if that's just something that I may have missed in the settings, but it popped up in Chinese, and I couldn't get out of it. I had to back out and restart it. But once the wind calmed down, I tried to fly it again, those warning messages went away. Um, second, this is, uh, like I said in the previous video, this is not a racing drone. <clears throat> So when I got out here and I flew it, and right now you can see I can switch that from slow to flight, sl the flight mode from slow to fast. And when you put it in fast mode, the uh, angle of uh, pitch is about like that. So it's constantly looking down at the ground if you're flying it fast forward. So if you wanted to use this with goggles or try to fly this around FPV, all you're going to see is the ground. Um, but if you put it in slow mode, the uh, angle of pitch is about like that. So if you got it up high enough, you can see enough of the horizon to keep the drone from hitting something while you're flying forward. Um, another thing that I found out was that these batteries do not have any type of um voltage protection so <clears throat> i had my voltage uh i had my uh sorry car coming by i had my uh warning set to 10 percent, and i was still playing around with it and the battery started to discharge faster and faster and faster after it reached that 10 percent. and i think i took it in the house and i forgot to shut it off and when i went to power back up and went to charge it it was dead dead as in it would not recharge because the battery had gone below the i guess the uh the minimum that lithium polymer batteries will accept when you put them on a charger. I had to kind of trick it and shock it to get it back up above three three volts so that I can get it back up to charging. And I'm not sure if I didn't totally damage this battery. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice. I'm not sure if I didn't totally damage this battery right now. I just use an old school uh, lithium trick that when you accidentally discharge your batteries too far, um, you can slow trickle charge it up and get it back up to the uh, minimum voltage so that it will accept, be accepted on a lithium charger. So with that said, those are the things that I kind of found out that were um, <clears throat> either buggy or glitchy um, or something that you should know about before you go out and get one of these. Um, I did some flight tests with it to figure out how far it could go. And I found out that if you're on a, a heavily, um, I guess a heavily... Uh, Wi-Fi uh, surrounded area like in my apartment complex um, you're probably not gonna get the same distance as you would get so that's why I moved over here to this other field it's a little bit sunny coming from my right so I'm gonna try to stay to my left um, <clears throat> um, out here in this field you probably can't see it and I didn't walk it but that tree line across from me it has to be at least 50 yards away from me and I was able to make it all the way out to that tree line and almost crash into those trees with control but when I took it back into the apartment complex um, it seemed to have less distance I, would, I was flying it between the apartments and it seemed like it was shorted by I don't know, a good 20 feet before it started saying heavy. It, it will give you warnings about having a, a worse wi or bad Wi-Fi signal, something like that. Can't remember what he was actually saying. Um, what else? Uh, height, I got it up. It, ha it does say in the manual that you cannot, you should not fly this above um, <clears throat> 30 feet. It is able to get up to about 33 feet. In fact, when you do a, a climb up with it, it'll stop at 33 feet. It won't go any further than that. So that's probably, like I said, at least 50 yards out and 33 feet high. Um, at 33 feet high if there is no wind which there isn't right now That's why I'm out so early in the morning because it's dead calm and I've been trying to fight with the winds over the last couple of days um, You should be able to snap off some really nice uh, aerial photos when it comes to video um, since the Tello does not have um, An internal storage card it does have to transmit those files or transmit that data to your phone and depending on your Wi-Fi signal You are going to get like if you can see right now. I don't know if you can see it because I'm still in this Let me close this out real quick um you are going to get those lag hits so latency is a little bit i mean it's fast when it's fast but you see those little lag hits when i move this around um so if you don't have the best wi-fi signal you're probably going to have crappy video but it's like flying at like i don't know 24 frames per second or filming at 24 frames per second it looks a little bit cinematic until you get those lag hits for about a second but um when i was flying around and doing stuff like dronies and orbits it almost gave it like a cinematic effect so if you can deal with those little lag hits and when you're doing like moving around if there's no if it's dead calm and it's doing an orbit we'll do, we'll do one in a couple minutes here um you will get a lag hit but it, like i said they're, they're they're intermittent pauses so it looks like it's almost part of the the uh the effect of what you're trying to accomplish when you're doing your video recording so with all that said let's get the tell up in the air and go through some of the flight modes 
It's got, it's got a couple of them. I wanted to show them to you if you haven't already seen them. Um, but this thing flies excellent. I mean, I, I don't have any problems with the flight. Only thing I have a problem with is I don't like the fact that I have to use um, the on-screen or simulated joysticks. I just can't pull off the maneuvers because I am used to the feel of the sticks and the direction and the angle and how much pressure I'm putting on them. And I can't tell that while moving my finger around on the screen. It's kind of hard to feel that out. You can kind of push your fingers in the direction that you want it to go. But if you're trying to do something like, an, uh, like a funnel with this thing, you can't tell how much rudder you're giving versus roll so you just it just it's all over the place so it takes a lot of time to kind of practice that i guess but other than that um i guess if you had a bluetooth controller that might be a little bit better i also had and i was trying to find them i had these stick on thumbsticks that you could stick onto your screen but i couldn't find them i'm gonna look for those and see if those actually work because those are like a dollar versus a bluetooth controller which is like 20 bucks um and until somebody comes out with like a controller that's built for the tello that's <clears throat> excuse me that's small and portable that kind of doesn't take up much more space in your phone i don't know if i want to invest in a bluetooth controller <clears throat> so sorry about my voice guys sorry about the it's cold i don't know if i'm getting cold here but we're gonna get this up in the air we're gonna try to fly it and see what it can do or show you what it can do so there are different takeoff modes if i hit takeoff right now you can do a ground takeoff and across the top you have uh, your icons that tell you what um each uh, I guess across the top, they just all these icons have a different function. First one's take off. The second one's flight mode. So the third one is um, <clears throat> settings. Next one is battery life. I'm at 90% right now, and this is a brand new battery, so I might have kind of either talked that down to 10, 10 talk that down 10%, or I kind of ruined the battery by flying it uh, too long. Um, you got well, strong Wi-Fi signal. I don't have Bluetooth on because I don't have a Bluetooth controller. The next one is uh, head speed. Um, it tells you how fast this thing is flying. I'm not sure why that would be a feature that I wouldn't want to know. Um, I would want to know how far it is and how high it is. The next one is the height. Um, it gets up to 33 feet. I'm not sure if that's as, a, an accurate um, telemetry reading. Like right now I'm holding at least three, three and a half, four feet off the ground. And it's not showing me anything. The next one over is how you play back your video. The next one over is flipping, flipping from um, camera to record or video camera to uh, stills camera. And then the last button across the top is your shutter button. Um, and then you, again, you have your simulated joysticks here. So um, I'm not going to do a ground takeoff. I'm actually going to do the first flight mode so that we don't waste too much time on this battery. Because it is dying right now pretty fast. I'm at 90, 89% now. I'm at, um, I was at 90% now. I'm at 89%. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do the first um, flight mode here, which is uh, it's called a throw and go takeoff. Pretty much you tap on throw and go. I guess you kind of center the drone so that it doesn't get caught up on your fingers. <clears throat> and um, you hit the start button like you would do with a, an auto takeoff on a DJI drone when the propeller starts flying. You let it go and it is up in the air. And it holds itself very, very stable. So while it's holding itself there, I'm going to rotate it around. I'm going to hold up my screen so probably you can see my screen and the tello in at the same time. And I want to turn it toward me. And I want to take my first photo. Show you what the photo quality is like with this bright sun coming from my right. We're going to take it all the way up to its maximum height right now. So while I got the battery, we're going to take it up to that 33 feet. It's climbing. And as you can see, it's still holding itself rock solid right there. It is at 33 feet right now, and it has stopped, so it can't do anything. I want to take a photo of the uh, neighborhood. All right, we're going to bring it down. It comes down pretty fast. All right. So, <clears throat> I also forgot to mention in uh, the pre-startup video, I guess, or the startup of this video, that there is a warning when you have um, low battery. So once it gets to 50%, the drone itself will um, yaw left and right. It'll wag you left and right to show you that the battery's done. It does that at 50%, and then when you get close to your critical, um, your critical battery setting, because you can set it from 10 to, I think, 100%. I have in mind at 10 right now. All right, so let's go into... Um, the next, because I need a lot of battery to do some, to pull off some of these maneuvers. We have the 360 here, which is like your orbit. The orbit works by wherever you position the tele, wherever that camera's positioned right now. So I'm standing right in front of the camera, and I'm going to bring it up just a little bit higher to get me in the frame. And the distance that you position it at is that's where that orbit's going to start, and you're going to be that 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 axis point that it's going to rotate around. So car coming behind me, we're going to hit the orbit right now. We're going to go yes, and it's going to start up. Oh, that's the 360. I hit the wrong one. So 360 for some reason is a built-in flight mode that pretty much does what you can do by doing a yaw. It rotates about 180 degrees, it stops, and then it rotates a little bit more all the way up to the other, another uh, another 180 degrees. 
and then it stops. And when you do these flight modes, it will start recording automatically. All right, so that's a, a 360. Let's go back in and let's do the, well, what's it called? It's called the circle. That's the orbit one. So that's the one where it's going to orbit around you like a DJ. I drone. I'm going to center myself in the, in the picture in the frame here, and I'm going to hit go. And it's going to start doing its thing. Like I said, it's dead calm out here. It's recording. And like I said, it, it, it does a great job. You get those little lag hits, but it still gives it a great cinematic effect right now. I'm impressed by what this thing can do, to be honest with you. So when it does the 360 or when it does the uh, circle, it's going to do one rotation. It's going to stop. So I'm going to continue to go. Recording's going to stop and the drone is going to stop. Let's go back in. Let's do another one. We already did the flight. I mean, we did the throw and go. We did the 360. There's this one that's called the up and out, which is like a droney. So to do the droney, what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it first. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit. It doesn't go that far. It only looks like it goes about 20 or 30 feet away from you, but it still gives you a droney effect. I'm going to take it up to where it's about a little bit above my head right here. Sorry, you can see my, uh, I got on a, a, another cell phone as a uh, action camera right now. I'm at 66% battery, so I need to get this going. Let's go and hit go, and it starts its uh, droney. And that's as far as it's going to go, guys. It's only going to go, uh, what, I don't know, 30, 40, 20, 30 feet probably. Not that far away from me. Let's bring it back in and bring it down some. All right, so let's go back into the flight modes again. And let's go into the next one, which is the flips. I'm not even going to do the bounce. I'm not even sure what the bounce is for, but all it does is literally bounce up and down a meter or so off the ground like like a like a basketball i'm not not sure what kind of effect that's trying to produce but this thing is actually able to do acrobatics and you got to do it while the battery's charged because it will tell you if you don't have more more than 50 percent battery and i'm coming up on it it will not do a flip so once you go into flips it'll put a little box on the screen and if you swipe right it'll do a flip right left it'll do a flip left forward it'll do a forward flip and back it'll do a backward flip and it doesn't great i mean like i said it holds its position Excellently doesn't drift around that much when it does it it stays at the same altitude that it took off from and it's ready to go into the next thing So we're gonna come out of that and where are we at we're at 51% so I got through all the flight modes Let's just double check make sure I got through all the flight modes. I did except for the bounce I'm not gonna waste any batteries on the bounce we went through distance. We went through height. We went through some of the uh, actual features here. Now we're just going to do some uh, flight performance So right now it is in slow mode and I like flying it in slow mode because it's uh, predictable and controllable so if you got it in slow mode it flies around, and that's the maximum angle of attack right there. It, it flies very smooth, very stable. And this is where I said if you had on some FPV goggles and you wanted to fly this around your house, on your living room, this is the mode you want to put it in. Very smooth, very predictable. And it's not frustrating when you're controlling it with the phone because your movements don't really matter that much. It's able to do maneuvers without you worrying about whether or not your fingers are going to slide off the sticks or whether or not it's going to go in a direction you don't want it to go but that's how fast it moves in slow mode let's do a full forward flight very slow very stable let's take it up a little bit bring it back in all right now it's a different beast when you put it in fast mode so i'm going to go back into my uh settings here i'm going to go into fast and we're going to go out of that and fast is a different beast and as you probably can see in this in this uh my phone if you can't because of the glare the controls have turned blue and it says fast head speed across the top here in the telemetry so here's fast power's a lot different it pulls out like a like a like a racing drone and this is where i said you're probably going to just see ground if you're trying to fly this around with goggles on unless you're up high enough to see the ground and the horizon, it's probably gonna get a little bit higher. It's probably not gonna give you the best racing effect. And you, and like I said, I don't even know how, I don't know how well it's gonna control with a, with a Bluetooth controller either. It, it seems to do well with these uh, simulated joysticks, but not um, not the most precise. Like I wouldn't feel comfortable flying this like between obstacles as a racing drone. It seems to slide around a little bit because I'm giving it over too much uh, movement with the simulated joysticks. So I'm at 28% here and I wanna kill this before I get down to to uh, 10%, um, that is pretty much the flight mode. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, well, like I told you, if you wanted to go into, and I could probably do this when I shut it down, but if you wanted to go in and view the stuff that you've done, you can hit on, hit the uh, re record button and it will show you all the pictures or photos that you've taken. There's one of them right there, that's from yesterday. 
So, uh, and like I said, this thing's holding rock solid, steady. Um, and I'm gonna go back out of that. And while you're in it, drone doesn't go anywhere. I've always, I wanted to do a test to see how far we're going, what would happen if it got too far away from me. So I'm gonna try to fly this straight out in that direction. And hopefully it doesn't get caught in that creek. And we'll see if it comes back to me. It will come back to you if the wind pushes it away from you. It'll come back to that start point. But I don't know if it'll come back to you if I just keep flying it straight. So let's just do a quick test to see if that happens. If I lose it, I lose it. Man, that thing is out there. I had to literally stop it because it was about to hit the tree line. It went long, much longer than 50, 50 yards at the time. Let me turn it back around and fly it back to me just to give you an idea how far I flew away from it. Let's get myself in the center there and let's just push it straight forward. That thing got out there, man. So it's got some distance on it. And I had full telemetry, full control. Um, right now I stopped it because I thought I was going to hit those trees out there in the distance, but yeah, it's, it's got some range on it. So if you want to take this out to the beach and do some flights up and down the beach and take it up and do some aerial photography, like I said, it's more than capable. I'm at 13% right now, so I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to land it. You can do a hand landing on this. Let's bring it in. Again, I don't want to lose my battery here. And I'm going to hit hand landing. And what you do is you go into hand landing, put your hand underneath of it. You got to hit confirm on everything on this thing. And just hit confirm. And it lands in your hand like a, like a DJI Spark. So that's it. That's the Tello, guys. Like I said, an amazing drone for 99 bucks, especially if you're getting into drones. Um, you can't beat this thing. What it can do, and like I said, if, you, if I somehow edit these photos into the video, you can see it, de it does decent photos and the video quality is usable. I mean, it's not the best because it's transmitting that video image to your phone, but it's usable. Don't have to register this. Register this. It's, um, it's pretty much a toy. So I'm at 12%. I'm going to power this down. If I took these pop guards off, I'm going to lighten this thing up. It's probably going to be even better when it comes to flight time and flight performance. I'm, I'm a fan of prop cars these days, and I didn't want to kind of get it caught or bump something with it and break off a propeller. Even though it comes with a set of replacements, um, I want to keep it, you know, keep from having to go out and buy those. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. I'll get back to you soon. Talk to you later. Bye.